Dear friends in Christ, I'm Chris McLean, lead pastor at Shady Grove United Methodist Church. A couple of days ago, Pastor Beanie and I created a video in response to the assault at the U.S. Capitol. In that video, we asked you to pray for peace. Because the FBI has given warning about threats to the various capitals across the U.S. We also asked you to pray the Lord's Prayer. For in that prayer, we grow in God's understanding of peace and of justice. We ask you to be mindful of your words, actions, the importance of exercising Christian character and encouraging others as they go about what is truthful, what is good, what is upbuilding. We hope that you will continue in those endeavors. We also said that we would search the scriptures for wisdom in this time. This is our common work. All together, we are church. Pastor Beanie and I do not claim to have a superior or unique wisdom for this time. But what we do have is a call, and it's a call we share with you. God is calling us to be the body of Christ in this time, in ministry to the world. And as we share that call, let us be humble and let us be gentle with one another as we try to grow in grace and the wisdom that God has for us. The first topic that I would like to approach is about violence. When I was a kid, I remember coming down the stairs and coming to talk to my dad, an officer in the U.S. Navy. And I said, Dad, war is wrong. It was a conviction I felt deeply in my heart that that was a godly understanding that war was wrong. And this was in the midst of the Cold War and I knew I was talking to my military officer, Dad. And he didn't have a lot of words for me, but he did listen. And I guess in that was a moment of mutually grieving the brokenness of the world. The scripture that undergirds my childhood understanding is found in Luke 22, when Jesus was betrayed and a crowd came to arrest him and take him to the authorities. The disciples of Jesus said to him, Lord, should we strike with the sword? And then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. Fast forward many years to a meeting that I had at which Bishop Kammerer was present. A question that I had for her was about how we go about appointing pastors. Because I had noticed that not every pastor seemed welcome in every congregation to which that pastor might be assigned. I wondered, what were we doing about that? She said, when that happens, we fight the way Christians fight. I think about that language, fight. We fight the way Christians fight. How is that? She finished her sentence by saying, through education, conversation, conferencing, listening, prayer, seeking the spirit. We fight the way Christians fight. And so in this first video, I want to acknowledge that in the Bible, we can find militaristic language, language that might even seem to undergird violence. Another scripture in which you might be mindful of that is one that even talks about armor and weaponry for battle. Listen. We find it in Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 18. This is where we learn about the whole armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of the Lord's power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. 
Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. This is the word of God for the people of God. And so friends, yes, our Bible, it talks about a sword, a helmet, a shield, a belt. It even talks in tones about a battle. But did you notice who the battle was against? It's not against one another. The scripture talks in terms of the devil, the evil powers. And this is where you get into those places where it seems like your pastor's always being so abstract, talking about intolerance, hatred, and not, not even necessarily hatred, but sometimes just plain apathy. A refusal to even want to know the experiences of others. An indifference to pain and brokenness in the world. And other times a cruelty happy to inflict it. If we want to know the reality of evil, we can, I always tell the youth, we can just pick up the newspaper and start talking about all the places where we say, can this be what God intends? And if we start tracing those threads, we find how we are pulled on by these forces, how we are pulled by spirits that are not the Holy Spirit. And that spirit, which is not the Holy Spirit of God, is a counter spirit. And did you notice in this belt, in this shield, in this helmet, in this sword, what were they? It was not an invitation to arm ourselves with physical weaponry. It, the belt is the belt of truth. And boy, do we need that now. This is not a time where truth is easy. But we are called to seek it. The breastplate is of righteousness. Now, it doesn't say self-righteousness. It doesn't say better than somebody else's sense of right and wrong. It doesn't say just your own idea of what is right and wrong. Righteousness is about what God sees. And so in order to prepare for this kind of confrontation with brokenness and evil in our world, we have to get right with God. That means looking at ourselves and our part in things, seeking repentance and asking for God's guidance. That's how we get in a right place and have that breastplate of righteousness. The shoes, they are shoes to spread the good news about peace. The shield is faith. The helmet is of salvation. So this ties right back into what we said about righteousness, right? We are people who are forgiven, offering the good news about God's invitation to forgiveness and seeking out this righteousness that brings peace that God's trying to tell us about. The sword is the word of God. We don't have to have all the words ourselves. It's God's word that guides us. And so friends, yes, there is language of fight, but like what our Bishop shared years ago, the fight is different. There's a way that Christians fight. I want to urge all persons that if you need to fight, Christ shows us a better way. It's about truth and righteousness, salvation, peace, 
and seeking God's guidance in our lives. And I invite you to that. Put down every other arm. Your fight is not with flesh and blood. I also want to lift up how Christian symbols are used in ways that do not represent Christ. And we have seen Christian symbols put side by side with violence and with hate and with wishing harm to others. This is not the way. Friends, I invite you into the scripture this week to further study God's way. Make your way into Luke 22. Make your way into Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 18. And fight the way Christians fight. Maybe in this time, it's easier not to use that word fight, but to say, seek the truth. Ask God for help in that. Love, goodness, and righteousness. Seek God in that. Hold fast to faith. Don't be faint of heart. Rejoice in your salvation and offer the gospel of peace. Offer it to our world, to all persons. And know that Christ is with us, God's word, living with us and through us by the gift of the Holy Spirit.